top five bad forms of debt. Number one, credit cards. The average person in the US carries a balance of about $8,000. $8,000. If you never purchased another item on that credit card and you said, you know what, I'm paying it off, and you just made the minimum payments, that $8,000 would be almost $12,000 by the time you paid it off. And it would take you four years to pay it off at an exorbitantly high interest rate. So just don't do it. Credit cards can be your best friend from an advanced strategies technique, but for this, simple, don't do it. If you have credit card balances, pay them off. Pay them off immediately. Stop spending on them. Call your, your, your credit card company, negotiate a lower rate. Don't do it, don't spend it. Number two, general high interest loans, probably specifically auto loans. So let's say that you've had a bankruptcy, uh, maybe you're new to the country, maybe you business went through some hard times, whatever the reason, you got terrible credit, you go to get an auto loan and you get nailed for 18, 20, 25, 30%. Just don't do it. If you need a vehicle, then save up and buy a used vehicle. If you can't save up and buy a used vehicle, then carpool. If you can't carpool, then take an Uber. If you can't Uber, then take public transportation. Whatever you need to do, avoid that auto loan. It's incredible, it's, it's super high. It's like a credit card for your vehicle. Number three, college education for a career that you don't wanna do or will never ever bring you the financial means to create wealth in your life. If you love art, if you love music, if you love drama, if you love economics, whatever the passion is, be brutally honest with yourself. Is there a field in demand for that? And if there is, is it going to allow me to create a life that I really want? I'm not saying you have to go out and get a high six, seven figure salary, but you need to ask yourself, like, what am I sacrificing in order to go through this education? If I love music, absolutely love it, I might be better off just getting a really well paying job or career and then creating a passion for music on the side. Don't handcuff your future with a college education that you're never gonna use. Number four, oh man, number four, HELOCs. You know, I recently took a HELOC out of my home, but that's because we borrowed so low at 3% and that money is being invested at double digit 12%. So that made a lot of sense for me from an advanced strategy. I took that money out, extracted it out and put it to work making way more money. That, those friends are bringing back way more friends. But I remember during the boom, just hearing stories of people going out and leveraging their house, extracting capital out of their house, taking all the equity and buying cars, spending trips, buying whatever the hell they wanted like it was never gonna end. Let's just say no, okay? Don't do it. HELOCs can be a wonderful thing as an advanced strategy, but for now, let's keep it simple, no. And number five, oh, the emotional ones. Weddings and holidays, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Do not do it. I have heard horror stories of people spending six figures, six figures, 100 grand. When you factor in the ring, the wedding, the photographer, the honeymoon, the, the food, the cake, the designer, the film, it's insane. Don't bankrupt your future marriage before you even get started. Finances, and stress around finances is one of the, I think it's number two or three top reason for divorce. Like, you wanna have a great time, do it. You wanna have an exact, exorbitant wedding, do it. But live within your means, and if you can't do it this year, then wait another year, save up, and do it. But do not go into massive amounts of debt for it. When I got married with my wife that I love absolutely beyond anything else in this world, we were in a financial position that wasn't very good. So I bought this thing right here. It's a silver ring I got at the mall. It cost $99 Canadian. It's what I wanted at the time and it's what I could afford that made sense. In the future, maybe I'll go back, maybe I'll buy something else, but to me, it doesn't really matter. If anything, this is a great reminder of where I've come from and it constantly drives me forward. But I had to make decisions and I had to have sacrifices at the time because it just wasn't in the cards for me. And then trips, holidays. I get it, you need to get away, you wanna go, you've been working your bag off, maybe you've had kids and you've made that a priority and you've decided to postpone on travel for a few years and you need a vacation, beautiful. But don't break the bank. 
There are way too many ways that you can create a vacation, even within your own city, that you don't have to go into massive amounts of debt for. And weddings and vacations often go hand in hand, so just don't do it. Whatever you need to, wait, sell some stuff, whatever you need to do, but don't do it. And that's a good gateway into the next, in, next part of this video that we're gonna go to. Now let's talk about things to avoid. Now I created this list called the five things to avoid like the plague, because I believe if you do this, you'll be so much further ahead and you'll make much better decisions and you'll have way more control over your finances. Number one, buying a bigger home than you need. Before you go house shopping, I don't care if it's for a condo, a duplex, a house, a lake lot, set a budget before you go shopping. When you go shopping, there's emotions involved, you see it, it's down the road from here, the ravine is right there, you can see the water. That can cloud your judgment. Set a budget ahead of time. Take a look at your income, your expenses, do some research to the area, what are the taxes, what are the maintenance costs historically in that area. Figure out what you can afford, set a budget, and then move forward. Because the Pandora's box that everybody can experience when they go to visit their mortgage broker is, I'll tell you what, Mrs. Jones, you're in for a special treat today. You set a budget of 350,000, but I'm here to tell you, we can actually get you pre-approved for $450,000. Well, just because you can afford it doesn't mean you need it. So set a budget ahead of time and then go shopping. Number two, you bought the car payment, not the car. Again, before you go shopping, before you sit in that vehicle and you smell that new car smell, before the leather wrapped steering wheel touches your hands. Set a budget, figure out what you want, figure out what you need, then go shopping. Far too often we buy the payment, not the car. And the way that this gets by is very deceivious. It's, it's great for, for dealerships, they gotta have marketing strategies and this is a big one of them. Is, no, 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 don't worry. That you've got a budget of $500 a month, beautiful, we can make that happen. We're gonna stretch your car payment over eight years instead of five. Well, what the hell, that doesn't make any sense. Yes, you hit your budget. Yes, your expenses match up the way that you want. But now you've bought a vehicle and instead of turning it over in five years and owning it, now you've pushed it out eight. Like, I don't know how quickly your guys' lives change, but think, about, think back to eight years ago, seven, six, five years ago. Did you live in the same house? Did you like the same food? Did you have the same hairstyle? Were you the same body weight as you are now, five, six, seven, eight years later? Things can change very quickly. And I guarantee you that in five years, when you're still paying off that vehicle for another three years, you're not gonna be excited that you bought it. You're gonna regret it. You're gonna hate it. Every time that makes that ticking sound that you've been avoiding to pay for because you can't afford the maintenance, you're gonna loathe that you did that. And then you're gonna do the worst thing after that, the worst thing possible. Just when you pay down and you've got to that point where the vehicle starts to become an asset because you've got equity in it, you're gonna go in and you're gonna trade it in because they're gonna call up and they're gonna say, hey, you still driving that car? We'd love to get you into a new one. What if I could take that old rust bucket off your hands? But that balance of that loan doesn't just get wiped away. It gets tacked onto the next loan and tacked onto the next loan. And you just keep stretching and stretching and you're never getting further ahead. So avoid it like the plague. Number three, any kind of deferred payment. Whether you're buying a house, whether it's laser eye surgery, whether it's a car payment, whether it's a student loan, if you are banking on the ability to pay for that purchase and using that 60 or 90 day buffer in order to save up or pay for it, you can't afford it, period. Do not purchase it. Wait until you can afford it. Number four, cash advances, payday loans, instant loans, money market loans. These are the devil. These are the crack cocaine to loans. Just say no. Whatever you have to do, sleep on your friend's couch, borrow money from your parents, just say no. Not only does it get you into this terrible habit of living beyond your means and trying to play catch up, but they're riddled with fees, interest rates, just say no. It is absolutely horrible. You should hesitate to even think about a payday loan. When you go to think about a payday loan, you should hesitate the same way 
you would hesitate if you needed advice for a partner. If you needed sex advice, you sure as hell are not asking your parents. And if they were the only person available and the only opinion in the world, you would still say, I don't know, man. I don't feel very good about this. Something doesn't seem right. That should burn into your skull. Never, ever take a payday loan, ever. And number five, oh, number five, the wolf in sheep's clothing. This can be a phenomenal resource or a phenomenal curse, depending on if you're paying attention or not. BOGO sales, retail BOGO sales. If you need a pair of jeans, better yet, if you need three pairs of jeans because you have no jeans left, you've taken all your jeans and you've thrown them in the garbage because they were nothing but holes and you couldn't wear them again, then it makes sense that you go down to the mall and they say, hey, buy two, get a third pair of jeans free. And you're like, awesome, I need three pairs of jeans and I'm only paying for two, this is awesome. But if you need one pair of jeans, you're not saving money, you're spending more than you need. If you were budgeting $100 for a pair of jeans, but now you've spent 200, you haven't saved money on the third pair that you didn't need, you spent an extra 100 bucks that you didn't need to spend. And this is very sneaky, because it works its way into your lifestyle in all sorts of facets, and then at the end of the month, it's not very clear as to where your money's leaking out of your, out of your monthly budget. You're not really sure, because you needed the purse, you needed the laptop bag, you needed this. BOGO sales can be a phenomenal resource too. I love peanut butter, love peanut butter. Eat natural peanut butter all the time. I find excuses to eat peanut butter. A lot of times it's just on a spoon. And I know I'm gonna eat peanut butter every single month. So if I go to the store and it's on sale, buy one, get one free, I'm gonna buy a second one, maybe a third one, because I know I'm gonna eat it every single month. Coffee, same thing. If you drink coffee and you drink the same kind of coffee every day, every week, every month, and you go to the store and it's on sale, buy one, get one, or buy five, get five free, then it makes sense to stockpile because you are actually saving money. But just be very careful. There's so many tricky little things out there. But if you take advantage of these tips and you go through your own personal finances and you apply these things to them, I know you'll be phenomenally successful. And just remember that not all debt is created equal and you wanna make sure that you master the debt game because this is where most people start. Their debt game doesn't start with more income. It starts with less expenses and managing the expenses you have. I'll see you guys next time.